from um, USC and Robert from UC Irvine. themselves by saying their name, once again their school, their job, and their professional role. Let's start with personal places myself. Move right. Right there. My name is Kathy Newich Wander. Don't worry, I'll the last name Kathy and it's fine. I work at USC University of Southern California. And um, I work in our disability services programs office. My primary role is to work with blind vision students as well as deaf and hard of hearing. My name is Robert Espero, and I'm the Assistant Director of uh, Accessible Resources and Technologies at the University of California, Irvine, and it's just a real cool title to say I like to break stuff and test stuff for people with disabilities and play with adaptive technologies, everything from uh, alternate media to uh, different kinds of softwares, apps, mobile, you name it. Anything that can plug in or has a battery, I'd like to break them and try and get it to work for our students. And 
uh, you could tell the student was kind of used to um, the parents talking for him and intimidating everybody. And what's worse is the impression that the student left on the faculty and staff. They're like, this never happens over this type of issue. Maybe, maybe another um, issue, but for the parent to come and talk to the students, um, talk to the faculty, and do most of the talk. So that's kind of a negative one that and the students got better, you know, um, as he progressed in that four years here. Uh, as far as a positive, and I, I'm not just saying this because parents here, I would say this to any group that I talk about here, and, like you're gaining something, I feel the tremendous loss, okay? Um, and just, and she's been so wonderful, um, but she's very um, positive experience because she really prepared, she looked ahead, she planned ahead, she was good at self-advocating, which, you know, Maybe you don't feel like you're good at that yet. You'll grow and learn, but um, she did all that. And so she kind of blazed the way, and she, a lot of people learned along the way. Um, so that was very positive. And I have to say, just that age group, you see them really blossom. It's a, it's a great time of development, just as a human being, um, the four years that they're at college. And some people come later and all that, but that's fine too. But it's a great, it's nice to see them grow as a person. My first uh, story is I was working with a student who was blind, uh, was admitted to our graduate program in history. And uh, if you're familiar with the UC system, it's a 10-week uh, quarter, um, and it's three quarters during the year. So as a history major, he basically was required to read about 10 entire texts per week. Uh, so that's 100 texts if you do the math uh, through his entire quarter. Um, and on top of that, the student was a colonial history major, which meant everything was images of handwritten text that basically established the foundation of our country. So um, back then, I don't know if you're familiar with microfiche or microform machines, which are basically image-based. We had to find a way to find out what he needed to research, get the required uh, materials from his instructors, and because of the lack of cooperation by the instructors, we wouldn't get them until probably a day before the actual lecture where these topics would be discussed. So uh, as you can see, that created an intense bottleneck, if not just pure stoppage in providing accessible materials to the student. What was awesome, but the positive in that is, I learned how to develop a relationship with the student, get a workflow to get at least some of his materials uh, so he could succeed or someone do okay in the program because the graduate program in history is a pretty intense one at, at UC Irvine. Uh, unfortunately, we continue to go through this experience with instructors who didn't really want to cooperate with us. Uh, so you miss some assignments and so forth. But the student was very understanding that we were doing everything on our, in our power as our Disability Services Center to assist them. Now the negative is it led into the lawsuit that actually the student won. Uh, which was great that the positive in that lawsuit was it brought attention to the need for accessible materials for students. The positive also out of that is we got another position in my office to help provide these materials. So I got to learn from the relationship with the student firsthand with such an intense program and also we got more help which I think a lot of it, we can all say that our offices are shortly staffed. We are severely understaffed in providing the, the necessary services to our students. A more recent example is uh, I had a student who is low vision, uh, borderline, uh, was blind. She's in our pharmaceutical sciences program. She'd be working with, uh, in physics, working in chemistry and, and doing the labs in both physics and chemistry. Uh, she was a highly motivated student, took a lot of initiative and actually participated in some trials to help improve her vision during her academic career. Uh, it's, I'm happy to say she did excellent in her pharmaceutical sciences program and is now a graduate student at Harvard University.
three. Also, um, having um, the professors communicate with the students because we're using YouTube, so all that is online, and um, I'm sure some of you guys know. Um, and what we're having is that JAWS seems to crash with YouTube. So we're trying to figure out a way. So the, what we're doing now is we're asking professors um, if they could let us know in advance. And um, what we're doing is pulling out all the notes that they put in the etudes and we put it in a, in a MP3 format for the students. So we either put it in the Victor Reader or we put it in their um, flash drive depending on the student. Um, that was, that's you know, a negative and a positive. And um, well, right now we're trying to figure out how, it, how can we work together with the professor in our office. And um, so, so hopefully the fall semester is about to start and we can have a positive uh, result. My challenge, I had a student who um, transferred to our university and was used to receiving materials in a certain format and was under the impression and the belief that PDFs were not accessible. College. Every time you received a PDF, it was never accessible. It was always an image-only type of uh, document. And so my challenge was to get the student to understand that PDFs can be accessible. And PDFs are a format that he's going to encounter quite a bit as he moves along in his academic career and even into profession. It's a different vibe to perspective college for this ability. There are many, but I would say self learn to self advocate and stay calm. And just self advocacy. You know, some show that, oh, what's that? But just learn to talk about why you need what you need, why you need this because of this, and how to clearly articulate your needs and your desires. Stay calm. I'd like to second that. Um, I think it's important to Knowing your assistant technology. Um, a lot of the times, um, students come in and they're used to working one particular way. Like they're only, you know, in the past they've only used Word documents, or in the past they've only had MP3s. Um, each campus will probably tell you that they do all media in a different way. So what you've done at a previous college or even in your high school, maybe a, a little bit different the school that you're going to attend. Um, so I would I would say to really understand your assistant technology, be open to other formats, because when you're open to other formats, um, you gain so much more access. Um, and you also become more independent. You're able to um, use other formats, possibly from like Bookshare or Learning, um, learning Ally. Um, so the better you are with your assistant Knowledge and technology, and the more comfortable you are with learning more and different things, I think you open up your world that much bigger. Definitely seasoned veterans before us here on the end, so I'll just uh, try and make something up. Maybe I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> no, I think that I will only add that as students or student accommodations, it's the other important thing would be develop good working relationship with your disability uh, services professionals. And the reason why I say that is because I think nine times out of 10, or nine staff people out of 10, they're there because they want to see you succeed. Uh, we didn't, we're not in the field for money. I didn't roll in here in an Escalade, and I don't have high-end homes you know, in Hawaii, but um, we're here to see you succeed. And know that that road will be bumpy at times, just because of the nature of uh, what's happening in education because of technologies that are coming out, the different learning methods and, and methodologies that are being put out there, and some of the challenges that are put within the programs that, that they're pursuing. But we are doing everything in our effort to ensure that you succeed at the highest level. And uh, by establishing that relationship, a good two-way relationship with, with dialogue, with your needs, concerns, uh, even just keeping to deadlines for turning in documents for conversion, 
uh, and turning in testing requests so you can be in the offices taking your extended time exams or even technology that you're using during those exams, it makes the, the, the process, I'm not going to say smooth because it is never really smooth. I mean, if we're honest, you know, there are definitely problems in the road. And it, it, that's why a two-way relationship is, is needed. It's just understanding that, that the system isn't perfect, but the relationship is what's going to ensure not only your success as a student, but it also ensures that we're doing our jobs for you. So please do you know, take the time to meet your specialists, your adaptive technologists, your conversion specialists, and develop a good relationship with them. they don't quite understand um, or don't even know about the services out there. Um, many of the times they are, they feel intimidated, but you will run into those professors that are willing to help you out and they will go out of their way. And um, for instance, we've had several professors who come into our office and have said, how can I help the student? And what can I do? And this is where we come in and we discuss with the professor and the students what are the type of services and um, also be sure, you know, advocate for yourself. Don't be, don't be afraid to voice out. And um, just like everyone mentioned, it is gonna be a bumpy road, but we try to do it the best that we can to have that road smooth for you.